start our interview tonight on Sunday Express. We are talking about uh, food security in the country and just focusing on how to get a hunger-free nation, a hunger-free world. Is it even possible? If yes, what is it that we need to do to get there? That is what we are going to be talking about, coming against the backdrop of what the country has gone through. Uh, at the beginning of September last year, we saw President Uhuru Kenyatta declaring drought a national disaster following the National Rainfall Report. And of course, 2.1 million Kenyans were reported to be facing acute starvation. Has the situation improved? That is what we will be focusing on today. And how do we reverse the trend and change the narrative when it comes to eradicating starvation and hunger in our country? And I'm going to be engaging in this particular conversation. Allow me to bring on board Kevin uh, Shingles. He's the country director, World Hunger Hilfe. Thank you so much for creating time for us. Thank you very much, Seraphine. It's a yeah. pleasure, and thank you for giving us an opportunity on your news segment tonight. And your pronunciation was pretty good, Welthunger <laughs> uh, but you can say W H H. Um, yes. Yeah. So um, thank you for the introduction. Um, and I think um, what we're talking about this evening mm. is the Global Hunger Index, um, commonly known as the GHI. And the GHI is is simply a tool um, that tracks hunger globally, regionally, but also um, country-wise. And um, mm. it's, a, it's a tool that we're going to be launching next week on the 26th of mm -hmm. January mm -hmm. um, with various stakeholders. And it looks at um, progress over time. All right. All right. Let me just cut you short because I want us to take this um, step by step for, okay. for Kenyans to understand this. So we're talking about the, a hunger report and um, there has been a lot that has been done to come up with this report in a simple explanation one would ask themselves what is this global hunger index report and also tell us in this global hunger index report how is our country as Kenya faring you've heard what I've said in the intro there 2.1 million Kenyans facing acute starvation where do we fall okay yeah yeah, so as I said, it's, it's, a, it's a tool that is tracking hun hunger. So we're looking at uh, food insecurity. We're looking at food secure uh, homes within Kenya. And um, this is tracked globally, but it also brings it home to Kenya, where we're monitoring through various indicators um, uh, for instance, the undernutrition or undernourishment within the population here in Kenya. It also focuses on that segment of um, community which is the under fives. And it look at, looks at stunting levels, it looks at wasting, um, and it gives an overall picture on um, whether Kenya is food secure or which areas of, uh, of Kenya are not food secure and where more attention needs to be paid mm -hmm. um, to bring out the desired outcomes of you know, a food secure nation, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, on a positive note, I think um, Kenya has made some steady progress since 2000 uh, to 2012, um, and the hunger si si situation has reduced. Um, but unfortunately, from 2012 onwards, um, the progress has been too slow. Mm. Um, and I think there really needs to be more done against the fight against hunger, um, because as I mentioned, we're, we're in a situation where it is slowing or it's actually stalling. And um, this is a worrying sign for Kenya, particularly with an increasing population. Mm. Um, and as you've mentioned, um, Uhuru Kenyatta declared a national drought, um, where we're seeing more and more of a situation where people are going hungry. All right. Shingles, uh, if, if the, the 2022 report is not yet out. That's what you are saying is to be launched on the 26th of this month. But if you look at what the 2021 report gave us, as a country, how are we ra ranking? And is it a good thing or a bad thing from where you sit? Okay. Um, we rank the, the Global Hunger Index from zero, which is um, low rates of hunger, right up to 100, which is a alarming or extreme uh, food insecurity within a country. And um, Kenya is actually still ranked as a serious uh, hunger situation. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, we think of Kenya as a middle to lower income country status, but we still have large segments of the population that live on less than two dollars a day um, that uh, are poverty stricken and unfortunately uh, are surviving on less than one me on, on a meal a day as well. So that is the situation we see and if we look at the statist statistics within the GHI, we have 24.8 uh, or 25% mm. of, you know, 50 million people here in Kenya that are actually regarded as 
um, undernourished. Mm. Um, that's, that's almost a quarter of the entire population. Yeah, that's not yeah. getting enough um, yeah. calorie yeah. intake. Um, that um, is, you know, leading to maybe um, a less healthy or productive life, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also see, as I mentioned, segments of the community, such as the children under yeah. five, mm -hmm. um, where we still see high rates of stunting, um, which is an indicator for um, chronic undernutrition. Um, and I think um, this also reflects that they're not getting enough vitamins or, or there's a, you know, mineral deficiencies within their diet as well. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately we also um, see a, a situation of um, wasted children. You know, 4.8% of all children under five in Kenya are actually wasted where we look at acute malnutrition. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately with the drought situation, we're seeing more and more of this situation um, across particularly the areas of northern Kenya, the Asil, you know, the arid, semi-arid lands of mm -hmm. Kenya. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, the global emergency threshold for um, global acute malnutrition by WHO is 15%. That then should cause a reaction or an emergency response. Mm -hmm. But um, recently, if you look at areas of Masabit and Turkana, you know, you've got areas in Masabit, uh, sub, uh, North Hoare sub-county, that we have around 24 to 26% of global acute malnutrition. If you go a bit further towards uh, Alaret, you know, uh, the area of uh, cross-border with Ethiopia, mm -hmm. you have as much as um, 46% global acute malnutrition. That means 46% of all children under five mm -hmm. um, uh, are suffering from, you know, lack of diet. Yeah, true. And when you talk, just in the interest uh, of our viewers, when you talk about indicators such as child wasting, these are children who have low weight for their height. When you talk about child stunting also as an indicator, these are children who have low height for their age. You know, just to make it easier for our viewers, and undernourishment is actually the share of the population that is uh, lacking uh, the caloric intake. We are, you know, they get insufficient caloric intake. Uh, you know, when you, you look at this and you look at the long-term impact this is going to have, if you look at the population um you know what is that significant impact that this is going to have if you have such a huge population uh, not being able to be well fed what is the future impact of this if we do not address it now well i think we're just going to see more and more humanitarian needs yeah you know we want to be able to support resilience we want communities to be able to cope with the current drought uh, uh, situation that they're experiencing but un unfortunately um, you know the figures that they, as they stand at the moment we see around 2.8 million people requiring humanitarian assistance mm -hmm. um, and this is because we've seen you know climate change has had uh, definitely an impact and we've seen an increased frequency of crises um, we've seen failed rains from 2020 um, October, November, December 2020. We've seen um, the long rains, March, April, May 2021, mm -hmm. also depressed rainfall. And then we've seen October, November, December 2021 that has also had depressed rainfall and some areas have received and others haven't received have anything. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is um, impacting the current situation um, within particularly the areas of northern All Kenya. Right. Uh, Shingles, um, I want us to be futuristic about this now. We know that there is a problem, there's a crisis, and like you said, even when, when I asked you that question earlier, Kenya is not at a very good place. Of course, you're making progress, but we are not at a good place when it comes to managing, uh, you know, hunger in our among our population. So, um, your organization has been pivotal in, in, in running certain grassroots initiatives, and we are at a point where we're trying to look at lasting solutions for this. I mean, what do you feel has worked and what has failed to work? And even our response, um, which include, uh, you know, um, supplying relief food to these populations that are vulnerable, giving cash uh, to those also that need it. Are, are, they, are they helping us to have that, that, that long lasting solution? Um, I think there's been a lot of effort in um, supporting resilience building yes. of communities, uh -huh. um, particularly way back from 2012. Um, and I think that's put us in a better situation where you know, some communities, some villages, some households are now able to um, support and protect themselves. Um, but as I mentioned, with these increasing crises that we see, the increased frequency of these crises, um, their coping ability has been constantly depleted. So I think we need to really emphasize and continue the resilience building. You know, 
what we want to focus on is self-help capacities. We want communities to be able to help themselves, mm -hmm. not rely on humanitarian aid coming in, not uh, food aid coming in. Um, but in your previous segments, um, it's fantastic that we've seen um, the hunger safety net has been mentioned, and that now there's two groups. There's the original group, the most vulnerable, and now we've seen uh, an acute crisis situation. So now there's another group that is al also receiving a small stipend to be able to get them through this process. So I think these are all great steps. I think also um, the Kenyan government has done a good job in regard to uh, forming the NDMA, the National Drought Management Authority. So we see um, figures on a monthly basis uh, on what the situation is throughout the country mm -hmm. and that allows also county governments um, uh, obviously devolved functions within those county governments be able to create contingency plans and be able to respond to the needs mm -hmm. that are within the community. All right. So, so what practical examples uh, of solutions uh, do we have on the table? Things that you yourself has seen work. Um, you know, you know the challenges that these communities, affected communities go through the biggest contributors to the hunger crisis in certain parts of the country. What is it that has practically helped? And how far do we need to go? What, what more do we need to do as a country to change the narrative in these populations? Sure. Like many organisations, we have what we call a global resilience program. Um, so we're supporting pastoralist communities. Um, we're supporting cross-border initiatives. You know, we have programs in Tukana, which are cross-border in the Karamoja region. We have cross-border programs in, in Masabit. Um, in the Moyali region, cross-border with Ethiopia. And what we're supporting there is um, aspects of land use plans. Um, we're, we're looking at um, uh, natural resource management. Um, and also there's, a, there's an aspect of conflict that comes into that as well and making sure that there are peace committees um, so that pastoralists can cross-border, that animals can access water points and can access graze land, etc. But there's also other things that we're doing at home. So, for, exa for example, um, we support uh, reseeding of um, graze land. We support uh, fodder production, so making sure that um, communities or um, uh, community groups uh, are demarcating areas that they can actually uh, produce fodder, um, bale that fodder so that when the dry periods come mm. that their animals have some feed. Um, but I think you know, what is critical is access to water. Yeah? And we see um, a lot of um, households that are, uh, are trekking up to eight kilometres just to fix, fetch water for their household needs. So this is something that we've been vested in quite heavily as well. Rehabilitation of water supply, particularly those strategic, uh, strategic points um, where, where both humans and, and animals um, lack water. Um, and yeah, I think another aspect is um, the diversity of livelihoods. You know, um, often, as you know, you have um, communities, um, women, pregnant women, lactating ladies, um, you have children under five, you have mm. the elderly, all in one sort of uh, location or village while the herders, the men, are out with their livestock. So we're trying to create some livelihoods for that segment of the community as well so that they can bring in a little bit of income to um, support their, their household needs. Mm. Mm -mm. Is it easy to change um, how people have seen it, how people have lived? Because that many believe this has been our way of life. Every time around this time, we always face drought. This has been our situation. We rely on relief food, and then we pass. And then next year, we're back at this again. Changing that belief, changing that trend, has it been easy? And what strategies are you, uh, you know, employing to get down to the communities and to speak their language and to be able to change their mindset to start thinking of long term solutions to their problems. Yeah, I mean, pastoralism is, is a traditional vocation, yeah? It's a livelihood that has been around for, for decades. So to change that mindset, to, to sort of influence a, a pastoralist uh, family to sell their livestock or diversify is Into very difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's very I'm difficult. trying to imagine that's yeah. not easy. But that's what we're also trying to promote. You know, if we are supporting a re rehabilit rehabilitation of a borehole, then um, we want a mother-to-mother a, a -mother group that's also involved uh, directly with that borehole so that we can also um, support good agricultural practices, um, maybe the production of vegetables, the introduction of indigenous vegetables, mm. um, to be able to diversify their diet at home as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, it is very difficult to change behaviour. 
Um, but I think you, you, we see more and more that, um, particularly like at the moment, we've got 1.4 um, million livestock that have been reported as um, uh, passing away because mm. of the current drought situation and the current rain that we've res received. All right. uh, and, and, and yeah, unfortunately, uh, is, is pastoralism sustainable? I think um, we need to complement that with other... With something else, yeah. yeah? Just to find different ways of addressing this crisis. I'm looking at this vision for a world without hunger. Is that even possible? Well, I mean, this is part of um, the ambition of the Kenyan government, yeah. um, SGD2, um, zero hunger by 2030. So, yeah, it is um, an, an aspiration of, of Kenya. Um, unfortunately, I, I think progress is slow, mm -hmm. um, but it's achievable. Um, and I think uh, collectively all stakeholders need to come together and um, ensure that we have the right policies, the right strategy and the right support to, to rural communities to be able to achieve that. So, yeah, and I, and I think this is also um, highlighted within uh, the pre, uh, President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta's Big Four agenda, you know, um, increasing agriculture. Right. You know, you, we have 33% of um, gross domestic product comes from the ag agricultural sector. So we need to continue to mm. invest and support those initiatives. All right. I like the optimism that you have left, left us with as we just about to wrap up this conversation. So the 26th of January, uh, there's going to be the launch of that report, uh, the Global Hunger index report this is for 2022 2021 2021 all right so tell us a bit about this and how it's going to inform you know how stakeholders need to um you know reap the benefits of this report what are some of the things that um they that how is it going to help us you know going forward yeah so i think the report will highlight some success or progress that we've made but it'll also highlight some of the failures and some of the areas that we need to concentrate on um to bring you know the the food security issue to the forefront of uh, planning within kenya um so we have a, a number of um panelists that are organized for the 26th and then we also have um, some live presentations on the 27th um they're coming from government they're coming from policy they're coming from academics um, they're coming from civil society themselves and really giving the story of what they're facing and uh, trying to call to action the need um, in regard to food insecurity in Kenya and you know, addressing it not only through, through policy but making sure that that policy um, reach the, reaches the grassroots level and um, is implemented. Um, throughout Kenya. So, yeah, this is really just a call to action and really just to, to highlight um, or raise awareness uh, within the public of, of where we stand and what we need to do going forward. So we have a number of technical staff that will help us address that issue and help us uh, deliberate on uh, what we need to do next. All right. Uh, Kevin Shingles, thank you for your time and, of course, just helping us understand more about the Global Hunger Index report and how our country is faring, how it has been ranked when it comes to the indicators that, uh, you know, form th this, this particular, uh, you know, index report. Of course, on the 26th of January, uh, this coming, um, this, this month, actually, <laughs> there's going to be the launch of that particular report, something to look forward to. Kevin is the country director for World Hunger Health foundation thank you once again for your time thank you very much all right and on that note we are going to be taking a very short break still more lined up ahead for you the latest are from the world of sports coming up in just a bit to stay with us <laughs>